Здравейте! Днес вземам интервю от Реймас Тиерс. Той е наш познат от няколко предавания преди това. Идва в нашето училище, където ни разказва за видеотехниката, за микрофоните, които се използват при заснемане на филми, различните видови камери, показани филмова талента. И беше наистина интересно. Днес обаче се срещаме по друг повод. Освен, че е режисьор, сценарист, актьор, той е и музикант. Той е китарист, текстописец, композитор, аранжор и продуцент. Надявам се да ви бъде интересно. Имаме гости. Това са част от групата Хаштаг от а, нашето училище. И така, а, ще говоря на английски. Моят английски не е толкова добър. Не е това, е на английски добър. Най-добър. <laughs> so, hi Raymond. Hello. Thank you for your time. Oh, no problem. And really I appreciate you coming to Vit especially for this interview. Mm. Let's uh, start from uh, the big questions maybe. Why are you in Bulgaria? Uh, I've spent a lot of time all over the United States, uh, traveled and lived in many places. Uh, but just prefer the culture in Eastern Europe than I do to to living in the U.S. Um, and I also grew up in Hawaii, which is not the same culture as the American culture. It's, uh, so it's in a, in a strange way the the Hawaiian culture is m- much more similar to an Eastern European culture than the culture in, the, in America is what you think of as American culture. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very different. So I, I I'm more at home here and. Uh, And actually, Bulgaria looks quite a lot like Oregon, which I've spent a lot of time in. Just there's more sunshine here in Bulgaria. So, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to live. Lots of, lots of great hiking and, you know, nature and stuff like that. So, so you like Bulgaria? Yeah, I like Bulgaria. That's why you're here. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell uh, that I visit you at your house and you got a beautiful view. Yeah. I got the picture, I'll yeah. show. Great. Uh, okay, how you start playing music? How old are you? How, how you, uh, you're in school and suddenly you wanted to play music? Or how, how that happened? Yeah, I think everybody in my high school, most of, you know, there's always a group of like rocker kids who always wanted to learn to play guitar and be in bands and, uh, you know, growing their hair out and stuff like that. And I had a good friend who lived down the street from me, Jason, and he was a really great guitar player. And um, and so I, I, when I was 13, got a guitar and started taking guitar lessons. I took guitar lessons for about two years from a guy, um, a guy named Mark Clavahea. And if you ever get the chance to look this up, he was in a band called this called Sacred Rite, R-I-T-E. And he's a really amazing guitar player and singer and songwriter. And they were in, in Hawaii, they were a very popular uh, kind of heavy metal band. But quite quite melodic one, uh, mm-hmm. he, you know. He was um, even at a young age. I think I think when I, he gave me lessons, he was probably 23 or 24. But even at that time, even though he was a guitar player, singer, and a rock band, you know, he could he could read music and knew all his music theory and was really accomplished. So I took lessons from him for a couple of years. Yeah. Why? Uh, Because of the other kids. They yeah, I mean playing. initially, but then I just I know I love I love music and then. I don't know, playing guitar was cool, and then... And why guitar? Because all the girls was... <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. More that just, you know, it's cool to plug in a guitar and make a lot of noise. And then I, th- I think that you start initially either because of other p- your friends are doing it, and then you think, oh, this is kind of cool. But then if you're musical, then, you know, you, you start to pick it up. And as soon as you start to be able to create your own music with some kind of ability, decent ability, or even half-decent ability... Then that becomes the hook, you know. If it if it's the other way around, where where you you just got into it because you know some sort of kind of popularity, mm-hmm. and you're not really interested in music, then I I don't think that's you know that's not my path. That's not really the it's not really the path of the people I try to play with either. So. Yeah. So you finished school, I don't know, high school or mm-hmm. college or something, and what happened then? Uh, I, mean, I, I know you, you went into some special school for sound recording, or that right. happened. On the later stage? No, no, I was, uh, I graduated high school when I was 16 years old, two years early. Uh, and then I went to Ohio, and there's a school called the Recording Workshop, which I believe is actually still there. 
and it has six uh, big uh, recording studios, which are really fantastically built studios, uh, and all the correct gear. And and at the time, they were six um, two-inch tape, 24-track analog mm -hmm. studios. And then they had a seventh studio that was uh, a digital recording studio, and it was reel-to-reel -reel digital tape. So now everything is recorded digitally into a computer, but the original digital studios were a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, but it was one inch, 24 track, and it and you put it on and, and it would wrap around the head like a videotape does. Uh, the head is like round and it is angled like this and the tape wraps around in a helical pattern. And this was the, this was the extra program, which I didn't go to. So I went to the main program and learned uh, learned to record bands. They would have live bands, you know, bands, the original bands come in who wanted to record at this, at this, at the, at the school. They got a chance to record in really great studios, but of course they had to deal with students as learning how to record them, so. Yeah, but something you decided or just skip them? Uh, I was always very, I was always kind of like very technical. Like I, uh, I'm just kind of naturally good with uh, any, anything technical, cars or electronics or whatever. That's good you mentioned cars. I got some small problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and my grandfather was quite the, quite a, a genius. He had two PhDs and one in mathematics and one in botany. And he did, um, he was, he did, had a master's degree in electrical engineering. And I kind of grew up right across the street from him. And so I spent most of my early childhood taking apart old military, uh, surplus equipment that he'd taken off of ships in you know the Navy and stuff like this from the Vietnam War and and the Korean War and taking things apart and putting them back together and him teaching me electronics and I could see they yeah. didn't explode so uh, that's a whole <laughs> yeah. other interview yeah yeah can you tell a little about your video career or shall I say filming career I, I don't sure. know the exactly word but you are in the recording school you are a musician mm -hmm. and then how that happened? Uh, I spent a number of years in. Um, I lived in both Portland, Oregon, and then Atlanta, Georgia, and then I moved back to Portland. So uh, in the United States, I lived in two places mostly, um, and I did uh, for work because it's very difficult to you know make a living in the arts at all. So for work, I always had uh, technical jobs. So sometimes working in recording studios, but also in fixing record. Uh, you know amplifiers and mixing consoles and guitar amps and things like this and then later in uh, computer software and computer hardware initially in software and um, and so I eventually um, kind of got uh, I did a couple albums a couple couple records with some some bands and then uh, you know keeping a band together for a long term is kind of hard so eventually got uh, got out of music and started being interested in making films uh, I had a, I had a computer consulting company where I would I would go downtown and and go to different uh, businesses and fix their computers uh -huh. net networks yeah so I was I was downtown a lot in in Portland and I so in the middle of the afternoon with two or three hours with nothing to do between appointments and so I started going to the movies you know, the cheap, matin what we call the matinee movies, the ones in the afternoon, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I started seeing all, every movie that was in the theater, you know, as I was waiting for another appointment. And then I started getting interested in, 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 in movies, because I know how difficult it is to record a record, you know, to, to get a band in, into a studio, and to, you know, it's a very complicated logistical yeah. process. And I thought, uh, well, maybe that's not challenging enough. Maybe I should try something harder, you know, which is, which is directing a movie. So... I uh, I decided to uh, to write and direct this movie, and it was um, it, so my first one was in 1999, and it was called Some of the Parts, like S U M. Is that your first? Yeah, and it was uh, it had a good script, but it was very low budget, you know, and, and it was everybody was volunteer, and I didn't go, I didn't go to film school, mm. but uh, it was kind of like a film school because I learned lots of things, I made a lot of mistakes, and and. You know, it's it's uh, it was kind of avant-garde and sort of crazy, but uh, had a lot of fun. Spent the whole summer doing it. Had a crew Can of people. Can we find it on the net? Somewhere? No, you no. can't. Okay. Um, no, even e even if I. No, I. You I don't wouldn't. want to show it. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's there's some good things about it for sure, but um, you know, it's more a, a learning experience, a first movie. Yeah. Know? So uh, and then I got 
and then I had then I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and kind of got back into music. And then, and then when I moved to Bulgaria, uh, I decided to get back into film and actually made a a, a proper um, film. Actually, shot it on thirty five millimeter celluloid, so not on digital, and um, and you know it's a feature length uh, psychological thriller. It's called Immunity. Immunitet. Immunitet. And it's all yeah. Bulgarian actors except for one uh, Dutch actor, and uh, it's it's about half in Bulgarian and half in English, and there's some some German thrown in, a little bit of French and stuff like that thrown into it. Who is the main actor? The main actor is uh, George Latarov, Gorky Latarov, who's a really talented actor from Sofia. Uh, and Vasil Mikhailov, and I Vasil think. Vasil Mikhailov, yeah. yeah. And he's... Uh, he's very famous. Yeah, and he plays the grandfather. And he, he owns an old photo store. And we shot it all in villages. And uh, so it was uh, quite an experience because Vasil doesn't speak a word of English. All the other Bulgarian actors speak English very well with a, a few small exceptions. But Vasil doesn't speak a word of English and had no interest. And uh, it isn't super fond of Americans. So we, uh, we had to... We had to become friends. It was uh, it was tough at first, but I, I learned a lot from him, an awful lot from him. So that was great. He's really talented. How he yeah. agreed to to be in the movie? Um, he had, he likes he likes to do he likes to work a lot. You know, even though he's in his I think he's in his seventies or eighties now. Yeah, he's quite. Yeah. But uh, but he likes to work a lot, and he likes to do different things. And he had never played uh, a photographer. He played a doctor and you know a lawyer and all kind you know everything you know. Play uh, yeah uh, a soldier. Yeah, yeah, many times and uh, and kings and you know everything's like this. And before I went to before I went to uh, meet with him, I, I tried to watch as many of his movies as I could, uh, and almost none of them have subtitles, so they're all in Bulgarian. My Bulgarian's not. It's and this was six years ago, so my Bulgarian was even much worse. Uh, so. So I, uh, there was this one movie that I was watching, and, and I believe it's called, uh, they call me Chicho. The, they call me Uncle, something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they call me Uncle. And, uh, no, me Chicho, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicho, something. And this is, this is quite, a, quite a good movie, and it's about him. He, I think he shot it when he, he was in his late 50s or early 60s, you know. Oh, it's about so. he goes to prison, his character goes to prison, and he gets out, and, and he gets with his old friends, and they try to go get revenge on this guy who put him in, who took all this, stole his house and his, all this yeah. stuff, right? And there's this scene where he's, uh, where the guy is sleeping. He sneaks into the guy's bedroom, and he's standing in the corner with a gun. And the guy wakes up, and he says, "Is this?" Uh, he says, "Like, like, what is this? What is this? Funny, coco, normal." And this is the scene, right? Which is very funny. Which is about all I got. But the, and so when I when I sat down with the seal. I could tell he wasn't he wasn't very interested in that, so I I just did that, you know. I said I, I watched your movie, and then I did that in Bulgarian. And he goes, okay, and then he was like, then he started to listen, like, and then he said, uh, what is the character? And I said, it's the guy who owns a photography store. He, he, he develops film, black and white film, and mm -hmm. and he says, are we going to show me developing the film? I said, yes, of course. He says, and will you send me to a class to develop the to learn to develop black and white film? I said. Of course we will. <laughs> so we called up someone at Natfiz and, and said, will you, will you teach yeah. Vasil Mohailov how to develop black and white film? And she was the photography teacher. She said, of joke? course, I will make a special class just for Vasil. <laughs> and he said, I, I've never played a photographer. So yeah, that was how we got him to come yeah. do it. Let's jump back to the music. Okay, yeah. Back to the music. I know you are also a songwriter. Yes. How do you write the songs, your songs, or, or, or you, you write songs for other people? Uh, well, initially... Uh, the music first, the text yeah, first, I've, the lyrics? I've never been a text first person. I've, mm -hmm. uh, I, I respect people who can do that. But um, I, if, if there's music, I can write words to it, as long as it's in English. Uh, and they, I, they just kind of come out, you know. And then sometimes it takes years for me to figure out what they mean. Sometimes I know what they mean. Uh, But I usually start with guitar, usually an acoustic guitar. Lately, I've been starting with piano because I just got a piano in my house, um, and I'm a terrible piano player. But the couple of things that I've written, I can sort of play. I'm getting better. Um, but I, I almost always start with music, even, even if it's not the music that I wrote. Initially, I started with a band where they had songs and they had lyrics, but I didn't like their lyrics, so I just wrote new lyrics for their songs and then started writing songs, you know. Yeah. So, 
you didn't learn it. It, it just no, came. no, no, no. I, uh, I, I mean, nobody ever. I don't know how you teach songwriting. I think you. I'm sure you can. Uh, you could probably te teach composition. Composition, yes. But teaching you songwriting is. Oh, it's such. It's so different for everybody. Yeah. You know. Yes. Um, I think that as I get older, I realize that. Um, You know, songwriting changes as you as you learn your instrument, or you learn different instruments. It changes, and as uh, your experience, you know, as you get more experience, it changes, uh, like like every kind of art. So, uh, to me now, like um, songwriting has to be inspired, yeah. or they they have to be some feeling, right? Some It's, story, yeah. Right, like uh, it's kind of sort of similar to the way uh, writing movie scripts you know there's a million ways to write a movie script and the first movie I wrote I have this idea for the story and I wrote the story and I made an outline of it you know this happens and then I wrote the characters and then I wrote this was what happens in each scene and then I went through each scene and I wrote oh let's these are the characters in the scene let's write dialogue for the scene it's a very sort of structured way to write a mm -hmm. movie and if it's a good idea for a movie and you pay attention then you can write a very good screenplay that way But then the next one, I thought um, to do it completely differently and in a, in a more inspired fashion. Because I thought, um, if you think about arts, uh, you know, if, if, if you say to somebody, you know, what is your favorite movie, one that you've seen 25, 30, 100 times, what is your favorite song, the one that you love that you all the time? Uh, and if you ask that person who loves that piece of arts, whether it's a painting or whatever it is, explain that whole thing to me. You know, this is an inter it's an interesting exercise. If you say to someone who is the biggest Game of Thrones fan in the world, if you say, find this person who, who knows everything about Game of Thrones, and you say, okay, tell me what happened in scene 56 from season four in, on episode five, they will look at you like, I, I don't know, no. because it's impossible. But even if it's one song, you know, if you say, oh, you love this song, well, sing me the, the second line from the third verse. Most people... Even if they love that song and heard it a thousand times, they can't do it. No. You know, if you ask somebody why do you love this movie so much, they'll tell you, "Oh, remember, there's this scene where this thing happens and this thing happens." And you go, "Okay, well, what happens over here?" And they go, "I, I can't remember." Well, this is your favorite movie, and this is what I realized. The thing about art is that people pick one little thing or two little things. They pick the highlights. Mm -hmm. They're not always the same. You know, it's the thing that makes the impression on that person. And they take that thing and they stick that in their head, you know. And they um, let's turn that off. Sorry. They stick that thing in their head, and they uh, and and that's their biggest impression, you know. Like uh, there's a statue. What is it? The, the Venus de Milo. It's a very famous statue, but it's missing the arms. But it's still a very famous statue, and it's never had the arms, right? They broke off a thousand years ago, right? So. So it's uh, so when I wrote, went to write the second film, I thought I would like to think of the story and the characters, but then not approach the script in a uh, structured fashion. Just think of like, do I have an idea for a scene that would be really interesting? Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes the idea for that scene is one line of dialogue, and maybe the idea for the scene is just the, the physical location or an object or whatever thing that that scene is interesting, is memorable to me, and I just wrote a bunch of scenes. And then when I got enough scenes that they would make a movie, then I put them together in some sort of order. And, and I think songwriting, to me, is starting to become this. You know, you can go to music school and you can say, well, here's this classic song structure, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, pre-chorus, break, chorus, outro, double chorus, you yeah. know? This is the classic song structure, abacab, whatever, you know, four, four time. Yeah. And, and you can you can study all that thing, and you can sit down, and you can construct a song, and you can even construct a hit song. But will it be an inspired song? Will you care about it, or will it just be something that you manufactured according to a set of rules? So, so to me now, like songwriting, the new music. Yeah, to me now, songwriting is. You know, if you're playing and you open your mouth and you sing without thinking about what you're going to sing, whatever comes out must have been inspired, hopefully. And it may be badly inspired, but at least at least it's inspired. It's inspired. You know? Yeah. So uh, yeah. let's talk about you played in America. 
I know you are quite interested in the Bulgarian scene and you are always out when they are musicians and stuff like that.